Logan Paul has his fingers in many pies, just like his little brother Jake. But his next venture has raised a few eyebrows after it was announced he is to host the Slap Fighting Championships with none other than the legend that is Arnold Schwarzenegger. If you didn't know that there was a Slap Fighting Championship, then fear not, you are not alone. Today, we are discussing everything we know about the Slap Fighting Championship. Stay tuned. We're jumping straight in to find out all about the bizarre combat sport. Stay with us. As everyone knows, the Paul brothers know how to make money, and what better way to do so than to launch an all-new combat sports venture and attach Arnold Schwarzenegger's name to it. California's former governor and ex-Hollywood superstar Arnie is all set to launch the Slap Fighting Championship alongside the older Paul brother. The idea is to put two guys up against each other to basically slap the heck out of each other. The first event took place at the start of this month and was live-streamed for free on Paul's YouTube channel, also being promoted in conjunction with Polish slap fighting company Punchdown. And Arnold even tweeted about the event, saying, prepare to watch some brutal slaps March 5th with me and Logan Paul live and free on Logan's YouTube and on Fanmeo. Having put his boxing career on the back burners for time being, Paul is focusing on his money-making endeavors and announced his partnership with the Terminator actor on his podcast, Impulsive. He said, I love the absurdity of it. I love the idea that two guys could just stand across from each other and just slap each other and see who falls down first. It's hilarious to me. It's like, how is that a real event? And absurd is probably the correct word. Word. It could also be the adjective used to describe his YouTube following, which currently stands at 23 million. Crazy stuff. Some Arnie news now. Stick around. Speaking last month, Schwarzenegger claimed that he has been 80% vegan for the past five years, and we had no idea you could reach your veganness as a percentage. He went on to claim that his doctor thought he might be a different person now that his cholesterol was so low. Obviously, Arnie knows a little bit about health and well-being, and described how he had mostly been eating a plant-based diet for the past five years, with significant health benefits. He said how his cholesterol had lowered significantly to the delight of his doctor, but he did reveal one guilty pleasure. The former bodybuilding champ said he is still partial to the odd steak, as well as a little touch of home in the shape of an Austrian wiener schnitzel. And it turns out leaving space for treats in your diet can have positive effects on your health, as long as you are sticking to your diet long term. Vegan bodybuilders would have been ridiculed in Arnie's heyday, but now they are more common than you might imagine, and Arnie, as a practicing vegan himself, mostly now nowadays, has done his bit to inspire the latest generation of vegan muscle men. Who knew? Arnie concluded by revealing that the diet had made him feel healthier and younger overall, and that's what it's all about, right? As long as he's happy, then good for him. Are you a proponent of the vegan lifestyle? Let us know your best recipes below. Jake Paul has responded to Brock Lesnar's comments about him now. Stay tuned. UFC and WWE star Brock Lesnar recently praised Jake Paul for his intuition, saying, great for YouTube. I'm happy for those guys. They were worked at something, they built their name up, they thought outside the box, they promoted themselves, and the younger Paul brother has even revealed they grew up watching the former UFC heavyweight, so to be mentioned by Lesnar must have been pretty crazy, which Jake himself referenced on social media, saying the pair loved him and used to watch him all the time growing up. It must be a pretty surreal feeling when one of your childhood heroes acknowledges you and actually knows who you are. Jake finished off with a touch of inspiration for any young fans of his own by saying, go chase your dreams today. As well as pro boxing, there has also been talk of the brothers Paul, making the transition into professional wrestling, so they could even come up against their childhood idol in the ring yet. But fans of combat sports have regularly criticized the brothers, with some bemoaning how their lack of amateur experience doesn't send a great message for the sport. Anthony Joshua, former heavyweight world boxing champ, had a bit of a backhanded compliment about Jake. He's great for boxing. He's trying. Zero amateur experience, throwing himself in the deep end. A big fight has been booked in the UFC lightweight division this week. Stay with us to find out about it. Perennial lightweight title challenger Tony Ferguson has booked his next fight and will go up against Michael Chandler in May at UFC 274. The pair are both coming off losses, but this one is a great chance to really propel one of these guys back into the upper echelon of the division. Chandler was last out against Justin Gaethje last year in an absolute war, which, to be fair, could have gone either way. But eventually Gaethje got the nod and fights for the title next. If the always game Chandler can get the W over Ferguson, who is probably in the autumn of his career these days, plus add another one or two, he would probably be in contention for a title fight this time next year. Ferguson, however, needs to stop the rot. The Brazilian jiu-jitsu expert has taken some heavy beatings recently, none more so than against the aforementioned Gaethje, and if he takes another heavy defeat come May, it could signal the end of his UFC run, having lost his last three. El Kukui had been a part of the furniture for the lightweight division for a decade, so hopefully for old time's sake, he can put together one last run. But there is nothing worse than seeing a guy suffer heavy beating after heavy beating, so if he does happen to lose the next one, maybe it's time 
time for him to call it a day. But given his personality, that's probably unlikely. What do you guys make of this one? Next up, we're talking about Michael Bisping. Legendary English UFC fighter Michael Bisping is soon going to be a star of the big screen. The former middleweight champ is no stranger to cinema, having appeared in a handful of movies throughout his career, but this one is all about him specifically. Bisping appeared on Ariel Helwani's MMA Hour last week to promote the upcoming documentary based on his life, and the Ultimate Fighter Season 3 winner had a lot to say. Bisping lost an eye to the sport and also recently appeared on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast, explaining he basically had a lie and cheat in his eye test to get the title fight with Luke Rockhold he had always craved. He also revealed that he fought around 10 fights with limited vision in his eye, but he needed the money, so basically he had no choice but to fight. Bisping is a bona fide legend in the sport and has also recently made his debut in the booth after filling in for regular commentators Daniel Cormier and Joe Rogan. The Bisping documentary will be out later this month and features commentary from Rogan, Dana White, and other top names in the sport. Will you be tuning into this one when it drops? Let us know below. And finally, we're looking ahead to UFC London this weekend. Stay tuned. This coming weekend sees the return of mainly British stars to the sport, featuring Patty, the Batty Pimblet, Arnold Allen, Tom Aspinall, and Molly McCann, amongst many others. Aspinall heads the bill against Alexander Volkov this weekend in a fight that is destined to not last the distance, as both fighters possess immense knockout power. Aspinall has so far gone 4 0 in the UFC and has finished all of his opponents, including legendary fighter Andre Arlovsky. And when asked on Helwani's podcast who Bisping sees as the most likely next English champion, he said he sees Aspinall as the main man. Many people would have expected him to name Pimblet, who is third on the bill this weekend, but Bisping believes the popular Scouser still has a lot of work to do before he gets his shot, which he does. He has only fought once so far in his UFC career, and although he won, he needs to put together a run of wins, which he hopes will continue this weekend. And a potential fight of the night bout, Ipswich fighter Arnold Allen takes on the ever-game Kiwi Dan Hooker, who was most recently out against the much-hyped Islam Makachev. This one features two fighters who have no problem coming forward, and Allen is currently on a 10-fight win streak, which he hopes he can extend to 11. How do you see these fights going? Let us know your predictions for the main card below. As always, thanks for joining us today, and remember to stop by next time for some more fun reveals. Also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Bye, guys.